Hey, what's up, YouTube? Um, I know a lot of people throughout history, and I think mostly it leads to either Franklin or Jefferson. I'd have to check, and it's really not that much an important thing, so I'm not going to be uh, precise and cite this one exactly. So you'll have to let me slide on being a little lazy here. But, you know, they say, like, apathy is, like, the root of all evil. Um, and in a lot of ways it is, but in a lot of ways it's a very powerful tool. Um, and what I want to say about that is we've seen some backfires in the past couple of years about things going wrong through uh, media relations, you know, where people will stop or they'll hold boycotts for a company for whatever reason, or th uh, boycott films, things like that. And uh, most of the time people just realize, like, okay, we can't control our consumer, but there's been what I'm talking about these times where the companies will lash out at the consumer um, for not partaking. And... Uh, that tends to somehow not be a death knell or a death throw for these companies, which is really amazing for me. Um, there was a couple years ago, there's the whole soda fiasco with Mountain Dew and their, their PR company that they hired out a uh, third party, where they pretty much chewed out everybody out when they were trying to rename the soda for something fun, and they basically ever, they came up with some sort of idiotic name that was very offensive because when you open polls up, that kind of stuff happens on the internet. The right way to do it is, you know, say, okay, guys, I'm glad you had your fun with your stuff. Let's pick the first real name or something that's, like, we can actually sell. But no, they chose to insult their customers, and guess what? You still see every day someone's walking around the mountain doing their hand. Um, that's just one example. You know, there's films and companies, and especially now, and I'm not going to get into it deeper, is the political cycle. Uh, is, you know, a lot of people are saying, like, I'm not going to vote this time or like that. And you've heard it every time. Um, I'm, I'm sure this is nothing new, but a lot of these people are passing in office as this is new. It's not, I assure you, I've been voting for a while because I'm old. But I, I, I tend to disagree with that, but I don't like the idea of people not using their vote, even if they choose to cast a throwaway. Um, traditionally in America, Mickey Mouse is the, the throwaway vote. Um, I think in the case of if Mickey Mouse was to landslide things, that speaks very, very deeply. Or just to show that you're there, um, a non-vote, but I'm not going to get any farther into that, I'll stop. Um, but it, it is showing the apathy when you see 30% of people come out. It's saying, like, something is wrong here. Um, the dangerous thing with that in a political system is now you have these, uh, the, the power of a minority, which goes against the plans, or I should say hope, of a uh, democracy. But in a lot of ways, it's also a function of the democracy. If the people don't care or don't like their options, they choose not to partake um, when you still have the option of pulling yourself, throwaway candidates, third parties, etc., etc. There's lots more. Um, so I think it's kind of a, a gray area, and I don't like to be too morally hard on people about that. As I said, it's just kind of a bugaboo for me to not do it at all. But with companies and things like that, it's a whole different ballgame because I have every right to do that. And what's annoying is we have these options and things now where companies that we've seen with the bank bailouts are able to now take our money um, as taxpayers to fund the fact that people don't want to put up with their stuff anymore um, instead of dealing with what they should do, which is revamp their structures. And I'm not going to get too big into the whole bailout thing, but that's a perfect example. Um, right now, you know, the NFL viewership is down about 10%. They got taxpayer funds to build a new stadium, you know, to help bring up the viewership. Or how about you guys invest some of your own money? Um, there's a whole big thing, and I kind of lean against the idea of using taxpayer funds to build stadiums. That could be its own video on its own, but I'll, I'll briefly touch on it. Theoretically, you do make a large draw for consumerism, um, you know, people are coming to the stadiums, you now have all the New Jerseys to shell, you have a new team, you have, uh, you're going to eventually at some point host things like a Super Bowl, uh, All-Star Games, things like that, so there's a big thing, you can use it for concerts, uh, so you have a lot of sales, but, you know, the, the areas around stadiums traditionally, historically, are not so hot, so you're kind of roughing up an area, which is a bummer, you're using a lot of land for what could be used for other things, so, it's a gray area. I lean on the side of I'm not really a big fan of it. On paper and mathematically, it's kind of a little harder to debate until you start breaking things down. Um, you know, stadiums will pay for themselves rather quickly, and after that, it's all cash flow. But you need to break things down to show it's not exactly that. But I'm done. I swear I'm done with that. Uh, as I said, with the apathy thing, it's, it's very scary now that the fact that I 
I mean, I watch the home team. That's about all. I watch it when I can. I uh, missed a couple games recently because I was out camping, because that takes priority. Um, it has nothing to do with the boycotts that people are doing for NFL or the fact that a lot of people are let down with some of the new rules. Um, it's just gotten what a lot of people feel is too much um, as far as their regulations. So there's a lot of reason viewerships is down, and then all the fact that they're able to pretty much take our money to fix their business. Um, it's becoming a very scary reality, and we've seen that before, and I think very much, unless people are going to step up against this, is do it. I mean, if I'm running a business that nobody likes, then I'm selling rocks for millions of dollars. Uh, nobody's going to care when my business goes bankrupt. I'm, I'm going to have to take a pay cut when my bank empties out. Uh, but it, with this trend, if we continue to allow this stuff, we're going to basically be able to opt out of services and still pay for them and not get the, the benefits or dislike the benefits. Uh, a big thing, you know, with people talking about with how Google's been becoming more and more ingrained into everyday life, it's not hard to opt out of Google services. I highly suggest stepping back from it. Uh, obviously, YouTube is a Google service um, that I still use, but whatever. I'm not, like, doing a worldwide boycott or anything. It's just I don't like a lot of their practices. Uh, unless they take this video down, they've been not so well received about taking uh, criticism, which I think is a huge error and I think is going to cause an exodus when somebody comes up with a Google 2 that doesn't have this kind of stuff. You know, there's a mass amount of cell phones that are using a Google product. Gmail is integrated through many schools. I mean, one of my work email accounts actually is powered by Gmail, so that, that's not anything new or weird. Um, a friend of mine who's still in college, their college email is powered by Gmail. So, like, it's not going to kill Google off, but it's going to make them rethink their policies. And I think with uh, a difference with they're not an entertainment company getting anything, and they're not going to be able to tie in as any sort of industry or, or a public service such as a power company, they're not going to really be able to do too much. And the fact that we're so tied into internet and all the services through it, be it uh, Google Maps even, um, and the, the, the privacy concerns we run into with something like Street View, I think it, it's actually a really good battleground, um, and I really hope that it errs on the side of people just stop going along with these things. Um, but that's a problem that we run into is, uh, especially like with the cell phones, is we don't have that many options through the internet. We have a bunch more, and uh, you see people doing it, and I tend to laugh at the people that had their little temper tantrums that they weren't making as much as they were. Um, I, if you, you step back and you look at it, from day one, the monetized system through YouTube should have been realized as this is a quick crash cash scheme. Like, I can make a couple bucks and bounce and be happy. But as we've come to see, people do not ever think that way. When they're having a, a good time, they spend all of the money. When they're having a bad time, they have no idea where all the money is. Um, which is just a great thing of a, the backwards view of Keynesian economics that we've seen governments take on. Um, you know, you save during the booms and spend during the busts. But whatever. Nobody listens to economists because we're boring. That's why nobody watches my YouTube channel. So... That's about all I wanted to say. I'm going to throw this up, and I uh, hope everybody's having a good day. I'm going to go play with some loud sticks outside in a little bit. should be rad.